I haven't met Arturo before, but I could not have a better stage setting presentation to talk about convergence innovation. Uh, yes, I am a behavioral scientist trained in behavioral economics 25, 30 years ago, uh, but progressively uh, realizing that until we tweak our model of modern economy and industrialization and modern society, we will never reach the scale that we need to address societal challenges such as environment or uh, nutrition and things like that. Uh, and unless also we capitalize on innovation. Um, uh, Arturo was talking about uh, our modern era. The last 300 years of industrialization are one second in 24 days of the humankind evolution. So we are better get serious into taking the means through which we have created the progress, uh, social as well as commercial, uh, depending on the economic estimate it is known that between 50 and 80 percent of the progress with modernization come with innovation. And that is why uh, the idea is to see, in addition to regula regulation and other public policy, to kind of uh, reduce what is not adaptive, uh, can we also, uh, by design, put quote-unquote, the good stuff upfront in innovation. So I will be talking, so we have used the term convergence innovation to, uh, to operationalize this approach. And I, will, <coughs> I have been uh, spearheading for more than 10, 15 years a whole worldwide process uh, taking the agri-food sector uh, as the domain uh, and starting with childhood obesity. I think David was saying this morning that USA, uh, the number of climate change are getting uh, uh, worse uh, in the last year. Uh, over the last two or three years, the life expectancy has been decreasing in spite of all the medical, uh, the medical uh, improvement. And a lot of it is because early poor, uh, early child development, childhood obesity, and so on. So here for packaging, I am not an expert in packaging, nor in uh, chemical, uh, in chemistry. So I've been working uh, with two uh, colleagues for technical insights, Claire Sun, uh, who has a company for packaging uh, solution, and Anderson Guimarães, who is a director at uh, Refresco Group, a bottler company, and was before a top executive uh, at uh, PepsiCo. Uh, so my presentation will be uh, first uh, talking about what I mean by this convergence innovation and, and some example of what we have done in the agri-food sector, what we are doing in the agri-food sector. Um, the second part is that I want to talk about the Translational Convergence Science Foundation. Um, I happen to believe that unless we articulate a science of convergence, we will just be talking about putting disciplines together, putting sectors different together and so on. And then what I would love is that within the context of today, if we were to have a sense of could we have one of those modular projects that is about building supply and demand for food packaging solution to endocrine disruption effects of BPA on child brain development for lifelong wellness. And if I skip um, the uh, one of those three, it may be the middle one because we have a good number of publications that you can uh, refer to, but let's try to squeeze the whole thing in 15 minutes. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, this, whoop. Uh, the way we define convergence innovation are being transformational discovery and innovation platforms converging across discipline and sector, fostering the production, promotion, and consumption of food and beverage that at the same time create economic outcome for organization or for countries, but do so through um, uh, uh, attributes or, or strategy or whatever that also contribute to the health of people and the health of the planet. And here, uh, this is kind of, what is this food that can, these things that you put on the 
on the market and that people put in their mouth, what do we need if we are to produce a food that here, what we have talking about this morning is what people need. Safety first, nutrition and so on. But if you are on the commercial side, you will say, I need to produce the food that the consumer wants. And that has to be at a price point that someone is willing and able to play. And as type of further composition of this product innovation, food that the planet can uh, sustain, and food that the farmer, the butler, or the value chain are able and willing to produce. So clearly, to innovate at that sweet spot, you need to bring various science, technology, and innovation pipeline differently. And you need to do so uh, in a manner that is very much involved by understanding of real world human behavior as well as real world uh, environment as well. So that's kind of the big picture of this, uh, <coughs> of this uh, uh, convergence innovation. Now, how do we do this? And that's where the modular approach is, is to say, what if we were to create space for collaboration that can be as much as possible digital and data supported, but that emerge wherever there is transformation that can contribute to this system level outcome of more economic, environmental, and health. So here, Pending upon, and the two key building blocks, so you get all of the science and all of the actors, uh, and you get the behavioral component, and the management and the economics and the kind of the science of the doing, as I call this. And then concretely, can we target outcome <coughs> that, uh, that we strategically design? But as you do that, what emerges is that you see transformation. And here, just to give you an example, for instance, uh, in Quebec, the province where McGill is located, uh, there has been uh, two or three pre-competitive projects uh, for building uh, inventory of natural ingredient uh, and, and processes that could help uh, industry innovate uh, in uh, reducing the number of, uh, of ingredient and while also having the constraint of the shelf life and so on. So here, what you do see is that key actors interested in this, key scientists have been <coughs> moving to produce this thing. Uh, another one here, uh, here, that is really where we started. In 2012, we started at global level working uh, with the pulse sector, chickpea, lentil, and so on. Canada, it's a major agricultural commodity, but also worldwide, uh, it has a lot of uh, uh, environmental uh, benefits and health benefits as well from a protein as well as glycemic index and so on. So we work with them, oops, that's not the one here. Uh, uh, we work with the agricultural agencies uh, for, uh, not agricultural agency, but the, uh, the Pulse Grower Association at global, national level and so on. We work with them through the political process to get the UN declare uh, the uh, the uh, international 2016 the international year of pulses. We work also with various um, uh, health professional association to see if there could be integration, for instance, whether it is for diabetes or for malnutrition, uh, into pulse-based ingredient. But we also work. Uh, with uh, uh, with uh, the agriculture, with all the value chain to see when the bulk of our food in, in industrialized country is commercial and even in developing country very soon you get 6% of commercial uh, traded products, you really need then to look at how can we introduce that commodity in a healthy and sustainable manner in the industrial supply chain. And that's really, so we uh, created, if you look at the first platform, uh, the global level, uh, PepsiCo, uh, 
the Firmenich, the CGIAR, Pulse Canada, and so on. And then we later on created a national platform uh, with this uh, with the same uh, the same uh, objective in India. And whoop. And here, uh, when I talk about uh, serendipitous. Uh, transformation. PepsiCo was one of the <coughs> one of the uh, uh, founder of the Global Pulse. Uh, I've been. We had the former vice chairman last week, with, uh, uh, two weeks ago, and uh, the ten percent only of their business now is tied to those to their legacy product. They have diversified in more nutritious and investing uh, 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 tremendously in sustainability. Same has been applied here in building this know-how to the small and medium businesses in uh, not only this one was in India, but also in Canada here, where we have now a formal Canada brand that is driving investment in the agri-food sector that will be taking that strategy in terms of enabling, strat enabling uh, approach to improve competitiveness. So here, uh, the um, skipping here, this notion of those <coughs> those uh, FCI uh, platform, uh, you get the digital. Uh, uh, the power of the data is important. Uh, deep understanding of human behavior, but then working, embedding all of this science with the action, and then from this, then you advance the the scientific pipelines in life science and bio and so on, at the same time that you advance this convergent science. Quickly here, uh, this is, uh, we started producing in the annal of the New York Academy of Science that I will refer to you, uh, if you later if you want, uh, about this, those type technological innovation is just the beginning. It has to be embedded with institutional innovation and social innovation as well. Uh, <coughs> and it has to be anchored. Uh, it's not either the system level or the behavior. It has to be anchored, the simultaneous transformation uh, into uh, the deep understanding of human behavior and the deep understanding of how we create the, the context within which human behavior happen. And if you allow me, uh, and this is based really, this is a PNES uh, 2012, I believe, system science approach. Uh, if we see this individual embedded within the system, then we need to find a way to capture, to keep this information within the system and play of what is it that transformation uh, can do uh, 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 at organizational level, professional practices, and so on. So here, that's kind of a, an important angle when we talk about this system and when we think of regulation in particular, when I was listening this morning, uh, you get transformation, you have the individual at the center, you get those outcomes that you want to create, you get those various sectors where you innovate, but then what is it that happened at each of those levels uh, to induce a transformation at scale that you want? Uh, and uh, at the core of this, and that's the link to the, uh, to the, um, uh, <laughs> to the, the the projects that I was talking I was talking about uh, is that uh, and that's the behavioral uh, uh, part of it. Uh, we are McGill is one of the key center of uh, neuro of uh, of neuroscience research and bringing the science of understanding how the human biology and brain react to this environment uh, is a key aspect of how we move forward. So basically here, and I have one minute, I will just show you uh, the core uh, idea. Uh, <coughs> so uh, this is here uh, an article that talk about uh, the, uh, the um, um, the, the disruptive um, endocrine effects of uh, BPA. 
uh, that as among one of the consequences uh, is uh, the child development, early child development. Uh, BPA is known to have uh, you get here all of those neuron GABA and so on. I know you look at it here primarily from an hormonal perspective, but there is a whole uh, reasonably robust evidence showing that it does happen. It does affect the brain ability <coughs> to uh, to um, uh, to to f to work to respond to environment effectively. So w and here uh, uh, I think Anna was producing this uh, um, this uh, article about a technical solution to move beyond BPA and reduce some of this stuff. But the point I want to make is that, and maybe I will end there, uh, is that the technical solution uh, is just the beginning. We really need to look at. Uh, the um, uh, the whole what does it mean uh, in terms of the product themselves, the retail, the, con the manufacturing, and so on and so forth. Uh, so I could uh, entertain you more with how we get to the ecosystem transformation and so on, but that uh, will be for some other time. But the slides are there. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.